nine of the van build. I honestly can't believe we made it to this point, but we did. And I'm excited to talk to you about what happened with the van build after the electrical was installed. I had lined up my friend Sean to come help with the carpentry of the van build and he actually remodeled my kitchen that's behind me. I still wanted to be involved in the process, but it also felt really nice to just hand over the project and get some help with it. So he began with the framing while I went and found the right paneling that we were gonna put on the ceiling. I ended up using the super lightweight pine paneling that I got from Home Depot. So I just found the planks that I need for the roofing and I'm super stoked. I use this whitewash stain on it that you just kind of rub into the wood. And I knew I wanted the inside to be kind of wood feeling, but I didn't want it to be overly orange or too many tones. So I liked the whitewash as it just gave it that kind of cool uh, by the beach feeling. We put all the wires where the lights were going to go. All right, the wires hanging down right now are for the lights and we have some of the insulation tucked up and then there's two panels in the middle, which I whitewashed yesterday and I think they look super good. And then over here we have framing happening. So we're gonna build the bed on this side and on this side's gonna be kind of a cabinet shelf. Sean started hanging the paneling up across and then we were able to finish putting that Havelock wool insulation in. It turned out that that one box that I had ordered that I think was like 150 feet or square feet of wool was perfect for the amount that I needed for the little ProMaster City. <laughs> All right, Sean, what'd you work on today? Uh, we put in the ceiling, the lights, and this passenger side wall prepped for cabinets in the bed tomorrow. While Sean hung up the paneling, I went and got Baltic birch plywood, which is kind of like a nice grade plywood, and that was what we used for the bed platform and the cabinets and I sanded and stained that, and then he did all the cutting and carpentry for the cabinets and the bed. We didn't really have like a blueprint lined out for the way that we wanted the inside of the build other than Solid Woodworks uh, YouTube channel. I'll link that below. He did a really sweet ProMaster City build. So that's what I was using as a reference and what I had shown to Sean for what kind of carpentry I wanted for the inside of the build. So what we did is we kind of did a inspired by the Solid Woodworks design, but we added this cabinet feature in the middle and that allowed for way more storage than we would have had without it. We had a countertop on the side, so about this much was the countertop, and it has a little sliding desk out that I can put my computer on and work on. And the cabinets are in the middle, and then on the other side, there's room for the water jug that I have in there. After the lights went in, they were actually wired to a dimmer switch on the wall, and then the dimmer switch was wired to the breaker, and I that was one of the first unmonitored electrical experiences I had by hooking up the lights to the breaker, and they worked, so that was really exciting. And I also got the Dometic fridge idea, the drawer fridge that's under the bed from Solid Woodwork, so that was all super helpful to find that video and the blueprint for that build, and then we just put our own twist on it. 
And halfway through the carpentry construction after the staining and the panels were done, I took off on a spring break trip and left the van at Sean's place and he pretty much finished up the build. Sean installed the fridge, he installed this little panel that has a USB, a lighter plug and a switch for the fridge so I can turn it on and off when I'm not camping, which is really nice. I really didn't want the build to feel like a square box, but I also wanted insulation. So I kind of gave it the task to Sean to figure out how to give it that boat feel so that we could put insulation and everything behind it and not be squared. So it turned out super awesome. There's a really great curve on the side so it doesn't feel like a square, but it's still all paneled and insulated behind it. It's definitely crazy to look back at the evolution of even all of these videos I've made of building the van and how much time and effort it actually took just to get to this point where we could begin the carpentry of the build. It turned out literally so good. Sean did such a great job. I can't even believe it. I'm gonna link Sean's info below too. And I can't wait to give you the final walkthrough video. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss that. And yeah, I guess that's gonna conclude my van build series. Thank you so much for being here and following along in all of this. I hope it's helped inspire your van build journey and help you find creative ways to solve the problems that come up when building a van. All right.